Australia couldn't do it, New Zealand couldn't do it, but the Springboks, they did it. On this video, I would like to review the Springboks versus the Lions third test match. Oh man, what a game. My blood pressure was probably over the roof, but the box did it and they won this game. So basically, I want to divide this review into three sections. Namely, the first section, I want to just say that I was wrong in my prediction. Um, then in the second section, I would like to discover the match stats. And in the final and last section, I just want to cover the main events that that stood out in this game okay so for those who are familiar with my videos and who is subscribed to my channel i made a couple of predictions before the series and also between the series and i'm just admitting tonight that i was wrong in my prediction where i predicted where i predicted that the lions will win the series and in my preview of the third test match, I predicted that the Lions will win the box because of the Springbok bench. That was my main reason. However, I was so wrong in my prediction because I expected more from the Lions and from Warren Gatlin due to what, especially Warren Gatlin, what he um, produced on the previous uh, tours to, to Australia and New Zealand and also what actually um, tipped me, tipped the skills for me into the into the Lions favour was the Springboks' match fitness. Um, obviously we all know the COVID-19 issues the team went through and the fact that they didn't play um, high intensity test match right before almost or over two years. But I was wrong Guys and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special group of players playing for the team in green and gold. And we must appreciate this group. What they've accomplished today by winning the series against the Lions is phenomenal. Winning a World Cup and winning the um, Alliance series, not many teams can boast having done that. And um, so I just want to say that we have a special group of players and a special team that we are supporting for those who are watching this video, who are supporting the Springboks. I must also say that the Springbok team has not even peaked yet. The guys that's playing now, they are still, I would say, in the mid of their test careers. We have guys getting their 50th cap now only. And this particular Springbok team are still relatively young and they are basically going to peak at the 2023 Rugby World Cup. So my second segment of this review is to, to look at the match stats so as to see um, basically how the teams um, went about doing their business. So the Springboks they scored one try and the Lions also scored one try each one having a conversion and the Springboks, they had four penalty goals and the Lions three. Then we also see that the Lions, they basically made 234 running meters compared to the Springboks' 186 running meters. Both teams, they kicked out of hand 28 times. The Lions passed the ball 111 times compared to the Springboks' 50 times or 50 passes. And the Lions, they made 102 runs and the Springbok made 56 runs. So that, so that just tell me that the Springbok, the Springbok team, they didn't actually play that much, much rugby. Then, if we look at the position, we see that the Lions, they had 63% position um, versus the Springboks is 37% as well as territory where the Lions had 63%. And the Springboks had 37%. We see also that the Springboks, with the, what actually turned the game for the Springboks as well was the scrum. The Springboks, they won 83% of the scrums. 
from the five from from the six grams they only lost one and the lions they from the seven grams they only successfully won or completed four of the seven grams then the line outs they were pretty even with the the lions winning 91% of the line outs and the spring box 81% also where the spring box or what turned the game for the spring box was the amount of penalties conceded the lions conceded 15 penalties versus the spring box's 12 penalties so if i go by the stats i can see that everything was pretty even except that the fact the spring box didn't play much ball in hand the lions dominated the, um, the ball in hand Stats, uh, statistics as well as the kicking but what turned for the spring box was the, the scrap penalties as well as the fact that the Lions um, considered a little bit more penalties than the spring box the third and final section I'm going to cover in this review is this match highlights so number one is the introduction of Finn Russell so Dan Bigger he went off with the injury and that forced Warren Gatlin to put on Finn Russell very early in the game but oh man what a player Finn Russell is it was in September last year when I watched a championship cup game where Finn Russell played for for his club I think for, for racing and I was never into Finn Russell but when I watched that game I actually saw how good Finn Russell is and he displayed that same skill set tonight against the Springboks. When he came on, he changed the dynamic of the game for the Lions. Then also, Andre Pollard not having his kicking boots on tonight. Andre Pollard, he laid a couple of points, I think nine points on the table by missing penalties. And that actually put the Springboks back because when the Springboks won those penalties, it was won at a time when the Springboks needed to, to score points because the Lions they were applying the pressure and the Springboks didn't get um, value also for when they were in the Lions half of the field and um, that also impacted the game negatively for the Springboks for the fact that Henry Pollard was not on his game tonight what the Lions also brought to this game was they used the Springboks' weapon against them which was the rolling mall Obviously the Lions scoring their try from the rolling mall and you could see that they gained confidence from the rolling mall where they had three points on offer, easy three points on offer but they decided to go for, for the line out in order for them to implement the rolling mall but the Springboks defended that rolling malls very well except for the one where they conceded the try but for the other two rolling malls the Springboks actually defended very well and they actually got penalties um, from those rolling malls. I know there was a second rolling mall where the Lions almost scored but then Tom Curry he was offside when he tried to block Sia Kulisi. so I think that that was for me something that I was actually very nervous about because the Lions were, were using the rolling mall very effectively as an attacking weapon against the Springboks oh man guys then once again Cheshwin Colby he did an Owen Farrell against he left Lee Williams for dead once again what a player we have in Cheslin Colby the guy can make something from nothing only given one opportunity and he scores a try what a player so Cheslin Colby his try turned it for the spring box we needed that try at that particular time and Cheslin Colby like he did in the World Cup stepped up to the plate to score a brilliant try they call Cheslin Colby the Messi of rugby and I would agree that guy is just phenomenal we are lucky to have him in our team another player that I actually had doubts in also before the series was my man Trevor Yankani but oh the guy produced the goods when Trevor Yankani came in the Springboks won two crucial scrum penalties at a particular time when they were under pressure and Trevor Yankani he stepped up to the plate I think going in for the future um, Trevor will be more prominent and is um, one if he is, is one the respect of many other rugby followers around the world for his performances in the series so I just want to wish Trevor Yankani everything of the best and congratulations for his brilliant performance in the series 
Then finally, I have to mention a man. This guy, he did it for us in 2009. And yo, <laughs> what a story for Molestein to come on again to slot two crucial penalties for the Springboks at two crucial moments in the game and winning it for the Springboks. Um, now this is what legends are made of and Mornestein will, will go into the, the archive and history books of Springbok and even international or even British and Irish Lions rugby um, where his name will be held in high esteem for many years to come. Imagine being there in 2009, hitting the win winning penalty for the Springboks and doing it again. And apparently they say that Mornestein in 12 years time, he will be 49 years old. So he's a, he will be available there to do it again for the Springboks. So guys, you can see the smile on my face. I'm very happy the box won, even though my predictions were wrong. But the box won, and as I earlier indicated and said that we have a very special team in the Springboks. And um, Justin Marshall from New Zealand, he, is, he said that the, the Springboks will, will find it more difficult to play against the All Blacks. We all know the All Blacks are the All Blacks, the brilliant team, but I can't wait for the Springboks to take on New Zealand and Australia. And um, that's going to be also a very good series, the Rugby Championship. So guys, thank you very much for, for watching this video. Thank you very much for watching my videos during this Lion series. Peter the Rugby Eater will definitely continue. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel because the next round will be the Rugby Championship. So guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys on my next video.